Hello and welcome to this guide on how to get to the moon in Kerbal Space Program 2. For this video we're going to use this rocket which is part of my Saturn V build tutorial. If you haven't seen that then please feel free to go and check that out and maybe you'd like to try building this yourself. Anyway without further ado I'm going to get straight into the tutorial so I'm going to press M on the keyboard and as you can see we already have this rocket in a nice circular orbit around Kerbin. And if you want to know how to do that, then please feel free to check out my How to Get Into Orbit tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on Kerbin, select the focus button. Then we're going to zoom out until we can see the moon. We're going to right click on that and set that as the target. Now what that's done is it's brought up these two nodes here. We've got the ascending node and the descending node. And that basically just signifies our relative inclination to the target body. So what we want to do is we want to get this number down to 0, 0.0 degrees. So we're going to place a maneuver node as close to the ascending node as possible. If you were approaching the descending node first, then you'd do it there. But because that's the first one we're going to hit, we're going to place it on this node. And then if you click near the maneuver node, it'll bring up these icons. And the ones we need to be paying attention to at the moment are the purple ones, which are the anti-normal arrow and the normal arrow. And the way I remember which one to pull on is if you're approaching the ascending node, which is AN, you pull down on the anti-normal arrow, whereas if you're approaching the descending node, then it's just the normal one. So AN equals anti-normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down on that ever so slightly until the numbers get to zero. There we go. And now that's ready, we're going to click the warp, sorry, the maneuver button on the SAS control bar. And it's always better to do this before we warp to the maneuver because, especially with heavier ships, it could take quite a while for it to get to the maneuver marker on the nav ball. And you might end up not pointing there in time to start your burn. So now that's stabilized, we're going to hit the warp to maneuver button. And because we have about 40 seconds left on the timer, I'm also going to warp forward a couple more notches until it gets to around 10 seconds. So this is only going to be a very small burn, so instead of going to full throttle, I'm going to increase the throttle ever so slightly. And then if we keep an eye on the burn gauge, once that reaches the bottom, we'll press X on our keyboard and that will cut the engine. there we have a 0.0, .0 relative inclination. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the maneuver which will send the rocket towards the moon. So for that we want to aim to get our trajectory somewhere a little a little way ahead of the moon's current position. So we'll place a maneuver node on our orbit and then we'll pull out on the prograde arrow And because we aren't quite rendezvousing with the moon yet, we're going to move it around a little bit. And as you can see, we now are now entering the moon's sphere. Now, that would probably normally do the trick. But what I like to do is instead of going around the right-hand side of the moon, I like to go around the left-hand side of the moon, which is called a free return trajectory. And what that basically does is it will, instead of sending the ship out away from Kerbin, it will actually bring it back towards Kerbin. So we're going to just mess with the orbit a little bit until our periapsis there reaches inside Kerbin's atmosphere. So that's 51, that's that's good. And you'll know what a uh, free return trajectory is if you've ever seen images from the Apollo missions where you can see the trajectory going in a nice figure eight So now that's ready, I'm going to hit the maneuver button on the SS control bar. And when it reaches the maneuver marker, we're going to hit the warp to maneuver button again. And 
because this is a nice long burn we're going to then once the timer reaches zero we're going to hit Z on our keyboards to go to full throttle As our apoapsis gets higher it will start to move a lot quicker so what we're going to do is once it starts to get to around there we're going to reduce the throttle a little bit and that way we'll have a bit more control over when we need to cut our throttle and we won't then overdo it start reducing the throttle a little bit so we've got a li little more control and keeping an eye on the burn gauge once that reaches zero we'll press X on our keyboards again we can also watch as our orbit comes back towards it and we've gone a little we've not gone quite far enough yet so I'm going to just increase the throttle a tiny little bit more try and get it to our manoeuvre. So there we have a periapsis as we would be coming back towards curbing of 48,000 metres which is pretty good and what that's done now is that's given us that nice figure 8 trajectory that you find on any image of a moon mission for the Apollo programme. So now we're there, we could just warp straight forwards, however, because this is an Apollo 11 style Saturn V, I'm going to detach the service module and then connect it to the LEM. And if you haven't done a two-stage lander like this, then you can feel free to skip forward using the chapters. But I'm just going to take through how to manoeuvre and dock with the LEM. So I'm firstly going to extend the high gain antenna. And then what we're going to do is we're going to activate RCS by pressing R on our keyboards or clicking the RCS button. And before we go any further, I'm going to use the square bracket to switch to the LEM. I'm going to turn the SAS on that and then I'm going to right click on the docking port of the CSM and set that as the target. And on the SAS control bar, I'm going to hit the target button and that will just keep the LEM pointed towards the CSM docking port. Then if we move back to the CSM we can now right click on the LEM docking port, set that as the target and do the same by clicking the target button on the SES control bar. So now the two docking ports are pointed straight at one another, we're going to hit the velocity bug twice until it brings up our target speed. And one thing I also like to do is I just like to orient the CSM on the nav ball, just so it makes manoeuvring a little bit easier. And as you can see, we're currently moving away from the LEM at 0.2 meters per second. So if you use H on our keyboards, we can bring that to a prograde trajectory of around about 0.5 and what we need to do is we need to try and keep the green prograde marker inside of the white uh, target marker and to do that we use the IKJL keys but because they're pointed at each other the two docking ports they should just go straight in There we are, docked to the LEM. Now we're going to press the stage button and extract the LEM from the booster. And that is the LEM extracted. 
So now if we go back to the map screen, we can warp towards the moon. So what I like to do is I like to right click just inside of our entering SOI marker. And click time warp to point. I'll just make things a little bit easier. Then if we warp forward a tiny bit more so we're actually inside the sphere of influence for the moon. Now that has brought up our periapsis around the moon and our periapsis is currently 417 meters. Thousand meters, sorry. So for the next bit we want to right click on the moon. Actually we need to right click on the moon and hit, hit focus, not target. And then what we want to do is we want to create another maneuver node as close to our periapsis as possible, possible. create a maneuver plan. And this time we're going to pull on the retrograde arrow until our orbit enters the moon's sphere of influence. Now instead of creating a circular orbit, we want to be a lot closer to the moon than our current periapsis. So we're going to bring that down until it's roughly around 75,000 meters. The reason we're going to 75 is because it will make things a lot, well, it'll, a lot more efficient when it comes to landing on the moon. So now our maneuver is created, we're going to once again hit the SAS button, click on the maneuver button, and then go to the maneuver marker on the nav ball. And now that's stabilised, once again we're going to hit the warp to manoeuvre button. And then as before I'm just going to warp forward ever so slightly until we get to about 10 seconds. Actually before we do that what we need to do is we need to activate the CSM engine. Uh, as you can see, the staging stack has changed ever so slightly, so we're going to need to move that into there. However, what I prefer to do is instead of manu uh, manually staging the engine, we're going to right-click on the engine and activate it. And then press Z on our keyboard to start the burn. As you can see, we just got there in time. But if we do that nice and early, then we'll have plenty of time before the burn starts. now we are in orbit around the moon. This is what is called an eccentric orbit, which means it's oval, it's not circular. And as I say, I'd, I like to get that to around about 75. So what we're going to do then is we're going to activate the RCS. And using the H and N keys, we're just going to fine tune our periapsis. Now that's around 75. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to create another maneuver on the periapsis and once again if we pull on the retrograde arrow we're going to try and circularize our orbit and the way i find it's easier to circularize the orbit is if once the apoapsis and the periapsis marks have started to move, we can reduce the, the amount of pressure we're putting on the arrow. Uh, we need to try and get that to around about 90 degrees from the maneuver marker, or the maneuver node. That will give us an apoapsis of 75.2 and 74.7, which is pretty nice. So once again, now that's done, we're going to point the ship at the maneuver marker. Then we are going to warp to the maneuver. This is a four second burn, so we can go to full throttle and then be prepared to cut the throttle shortly afterwards.
So I overdid that one ever so slightly. And as I say, I prefer it to be at 75. So I'm just going to use the RCS again just to try and get things nice and circular. And those are the basic principles on how to get into orbit around the moon. So if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like it and subscribe. Next up, I'm going to be telling you how to land on the moon using the lunar excursion module. And yep, yeah, please feel free to also leave a comment and hopefully I will see you then.